I was contacted by Timo, who had bought themselves some uh, 12 volt lamps for the garden, and these came from Class Olson. And they got uh, quite a few of them and used them with a proper 12 volt uh, LED lighting transformer. And within a very short period of time, three of them had failed, and they wondered what had happened if they'd done something wrong. Well, the answer is they hadn't done something wrong, they'd been giving it the 12 volt supply. Uh, and uh, from the sound of it, it sounds like a proper type of power supply. So it, I took one of them apart. Now, before I go any further here, I want to mention that a few of you have said that you were getting, that you used to get updates from my channel when, uh, you know, when I released a video, you get a notification and you've not been getting that. I want to show you how to re-enable that. So this is Nerd Rage's uh, front page. Greetings, fellow nerds. And uh, it's a really amazing chemistry channel with just like how to make quantum dots and stuff that is so really deeply complex. But as an example, if you were if you were subscribed to Nerd Rage, um, then to re-enable notifications, go up to the subscribe box. If you're not subscribed to my channel, you could subscribe. But if you go up to the subscribe box, you'll see the little bell next to it. And if you click that bell in next to the, the word subscribed, you shall see the option menu will pop up for um, enabling the notifications. It's just something that YouTube has done for some inexplicable reason. But getting back to this lamp, which is the main subject of this video, it was quite hard to take to bits. The glass, and there's lots of bits left, was glued in with sort of silicon, and it really was hard to get out. I had to smash in the end and then pick all the broken bits out. So once that's out, this circuit board is actually held in by four screws at the edge with heat sink compound. And there's a little hole, actually it would be around this way, there's a little hole that the cables from this power supply come up through that hole to feed the lamp. I didn't also realise at the time, but there were two more screws down here that would have released the whole back assembly out, which would have been useful because, uh, as you can see, I used brute force and it came out with quite some violence. It was quite hard to open, very chewy, tough plastic. And then once it was open, I suddenly realised, oh, I could have just undone those screws, but not to worry. So the power in supply inside is based on a step up circuit. So 12 volts comes in, it, there's a fuse, there's a little uh, metal oxide varistor. Then there's a discrete bridge rectifier and then a chip with a drive transistor and it boosts the voltage up to drive the higher voltage of these LEDs. And there's eight uh, standard white LEDs and then there's four red ones. And I'm not sure why they've got the red ones. I'm guessing it's just to change the colour somehow. But I did notice I put my meter to the continuity. And each of these LEDs, if I can just get them to glow, yep, yeah, just that, that one's a fairly sort of average white. And then the red one is a sort of fairly, it's a warm red. And it seems to have two chips in parallel because the voltage is reading is 1.7 volts. Oh, actually, it might be three little chips in there in parallel. Yeah, so just to boost the output a bit. So, um... Yes. So eight white LEDs, four red LEDs, and they're all sort of effectively wired in series in here. And what this uh, little chip does is it, it drives this transistor here and th then switches that inductor. And it basically steps the voltage up to the point it can drive these. And I'd guess the voltage for these would be about 24, about 30 volts probably. It would step it up to, to drive that. And it's a fairly common arrangement uh, of doing this. However, I dug this out and I took the wires out from the hole and uh, resold them on and then powered it up and found the fuse had blown. It bypassed the fuse just to see what happened, as one does. And uh, this little transistor was not happy. It started making cracking, popping noises. The LEDs glowed very briefly and then it failed. So this transistor has bitten the dust in them. And uh, to be honest, it's quite a... You, the fact that the lamp isn't easy to repair. This is quite nice and chunky though. But uh, what you have to really, you'd have to smash the glass, pull the circuit board off, desolder it, you'd have to uh, undo those screws. So only if I was really desperate would I start trying to uh, replace that little transistor in there. I can't read what it is either because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of blistered up a little bit. Hold on, I'm just going to have a go actually. See if there's anything left that I can actually read on it. Um, no, it's really, really not terribly, it says six, oh, it's 625D, 625D, it is readable, although it's all blistered. Okay, 
So um, I was thinking, I'm quite intrigued. It's not easily repairable, so I, I'm quite intrigued. I've got the soldering iron on. I'm going to desolder these. And I do happen to have, I suppose I could do it from the bench power supply, but I'm going to stick on, where is it, where is it, where, there it is, capacitive dropper and just run it directly from the mains, just the circuit board itself, just to see what colour it is. So I'm just going to tack these leads on right now. Let me drop more solder on here because this looks a bit dry. Because I'm kind of intrigued to see what effect the red LEDs has on the, the overall colour. And I shall bring in the quick test. Here's the quick test. And poke the wires into it. And we'll see, let's uh, plug this in, what colour this lights up. Keeping my fingers well away from it. Okay, the white LEDs are sort of, they're a warm white. Um, hold on, what's the best way to do this? What's the best way to see what this looks like? I could put a little cover over it like that. Okay, I see what they're getting here. The colour is kind of golden pinkish warm white. The red, uh, it's an orangey red and it's adding to the already sort of semi warmish lights and it's creating a very pinky warm colour. It's quite interesting, it's, a, it's an unusual colour. It's almost, I'd call it a golden white. Is there a way I can actually show you this? What if I turn this off? That's going to look quite flickery but it does kind of give you an idea, does it? Does it give you an idea? That's just changed the colour completely well, now that I've done that. But yeah, uh, so, yeah, these lamps, uh, they're kind of dead, unfortunately. Uh, let's see if I can uh, get this back. This is about to swamp out. Sorry about that. Um, oh, yeah, that's uh, just completely swamped out and changed the, the colour correction as well. But, yeah, uh, it's an interesting approach, but I, d I don't know why they failed. Uh, I think they're just maybe bad lamps, unless something really did happen with the power supplies. But um, it looks as though it's got sort of circuitry that would, accommodate a modest a voltage range. I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, interesting lamps, but uh, just not that easy to take to bits, not easy to repair, so it's a shame really. But uh, there you go. So I was thinking it would be quite nice to see this lit again because it's an unusual colour. And a lot of these uh, LED circuit boards tend to be standard size, and I wonder, is this going to fit in a generic LED lamp? So here is an old one from a while back, and it's got a capacitive dropper in this little round circuit board. And the circuit boards are roughly the same diameter, and roughly the same thickness. So I'm going to graph this in. Now, this one's using a capacitive dropper but without any smoothing, which is a bit annoying, but that's okay. It's a low enough voltage, it's not going to show much flicker to my eyes, but it probably will on the iPad as it usually does. So let's work out which of these connections is positive and which is negative, since they're both red anyway. Um, those diodes pointing there, then it's coming through this resistor. So this is a positive, and this one's a negative. I'm just going to make a little black mark in that, just to remind me what they are. So that one's a negative. Right. Let's desolder this and graft it in. For those of you uh, commenting on my strange choice of a uh, colour scheme of clothing, this is actually a high-vis sweatshirt. High-vis hoodie, it's just want to add extra and it's nice and new and clean and well it won't last. It won't, oh, actually I might just keep this one clean because uh, it's quite a comfortable one. It's unusual, unusually comfortable compared to a lot of the other high-vis clothing. So here we get the negative one that I've just marked with this little black dot. So let's tack that down onto there. I remember the first high vis clothing when it came out. The apart from the usual jacket, waterproof jacket and stuff like that, when they started introducing the jumpers and the sort of uh, polo shirts and stuff like that, the first stuff was really uncomfortable. It really itched like hell when you wore it. But the newer fabrics, they seem to have really solved that problem. It's quite comfortable, very soft indeed, very nice. Hence why I'm wearing it. The temperature, and uh, now it's winter again, the temperature's coming down here. And that's good, because I like a cold, 
cold sort of environment. I prefer having worked outdoors for so long in my life. It's just, yeah, I prefer a cold environment. I'd rather be dressed warmly and uh, have a cooler house. So the house is just starting to get down to a nice temperature after this uh, summer heat. Right, so I'm going to put this back in now. I've grafted that in. Hopefully I've got the polarity right. I'm going to make sure the circuit board's sort of pointing down the way like that, so this doesn't short against it. I'm going to clip this in. Is this going to work? It's only one way to find out, and that's to plug it in. So just out of interest, let's get the power meter. That, uh, the power will actually be determined by the little capacitive dropper in there. Is this going to work? Is this going to work? Yes, it is. Well, that's a very pinkish colour. Uh, it's only 1.3 watts. That's nothing. And the current through the LEDs is roughly about 30 milliamps. But that, uh, I'm not 100% convinced that that is one way to find out, and that's to put a meter across one of them while it's lit. That's precarious. Oh, this is going to go bang at some point. This is very likely to go bang now, isn't it? I really should be more careful, but that's never going to happen, is it? Reckless is my middle name. Right, let's uh, measure the current through these LEDs by turning this meter to, let's turn it to 200 milliamps. milliamps. Let's change the lead over to here and let's just bridge one of those LEDs out. That circuit board has just flipped over again. That's very annoying. I'm going to have to unplug it before I flip it back over just in case I get a wallop off it. Stay. Now, what's the best place to actually... Ah, it's flipped again. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to uh, turn that around like this. This is going to end in tears one day. And if I do get, give myself a violent electric shock, it's it's going on YouTube. I'm not going to hide it from you guys. Right, so I'm going to bridge this LED out, and it says approximately 20... Oh, hold on, I'll bring the meter in. The current, actual current through these is approximately 24 milliamps. That's all right. Because they're actually quite heavily rated LEDs. Yeah, that's that's quite interesting. That's quite interesting indeed. So let's uh, mush this in. It's not got an electrolytic in it, which uh, means they're not likely to get a whack off the thing unless that uh, other capacitor's holding a bit of a charge. And I shall put this in. I may just stick this in a, one of the light fittings in the house just to try it out, actually. Because it is, as I say, it's quite a golden, strange, pinky worm colour. It's, it's actually quite nice. And as always, I'm going to take the lead out, the current setting of the meter, the current position, and put it back to the other normal position. Job done. So yeah, that's quite interesting. I'm going to go and uh, try this in the lamp holder now. <laughs> 